every single year when it comes time to induct players, coaches, or builders of the game into the Hockey Hall of Fame, there are players that are left off of the list that leave hockey fans scratching their head. Players that year after year just do not get the nod despite having had amazing careers and having the statistics that are up to par with other current members of the Hockey Hall of Fame. You guys kind of get where I'm going with this. In this video, we are going to take a look at some of the greatest NHL players of all time not currently in the Hockey Hall of Fame. And as always, if you guys are new to the channel and you want to see more NHL content like this, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. And with all that being said, let's jump right into the video. Number 7, Chris Osgood. Having spent time with the New York Islanders and the St. Louis Blues throughout his NHL career, Osgood will always be remembered for the time that he spent with the Detroit Red Wings. Osgood won three Stanley Cups with the Detroit Red Wings, one in 1997 where he served as the backup to Mike Vernon, one in 1998 where he was the starter, and then in 2008 where he was the starter as well. Osgood is also a two-time winner of the William M. Jennings Trophy, one in 1996 and the other in 2008, an award that is given to the goaltender having played a minimum of 25 games for the team with the fewest goals scored against. Overall, Osgood had a fantastic career, racking up 401 wins, which currently puts him 13th all time. He finished with a 2.49 goals against and a 905 save percentage. The one knock against Chris Osgood is the fact that he played played on such a stacked Detroit Red Wings team basically throughout his entire career in the NHL. But no matter how stacked your team is, you're not going to win a lot of games unless you have good goaltending, and Chris Osgood gave the Red Wings great goaltending for many years. Yeah, he never won a Vezina Trophy or anything, but his numbers throughout his career are on par with a lot of the other goaltenders that are already inducted into the Hall of Fame. At number 6, we have Keith Kachuk, arguably one of the greatest power forwards to ever play the game racking up over 1,000 career points and over 2,200 penalty minutes. He spent 19 seasons in the National Hockey League after being selected with the 19th overall pick in the 1990 NHL Draft by the Winnipeg Jets. Having spent time throughout his career with the Jets slash Coyotes, the St. Louis Blues, and the Atlanta Thrashers, the prime of his career was definitely from the 1995-96 season up until the 2000-2001 season. During that time span, Kachuk scored a total of 200 129 goals and put up 432 total points in just 408 games. And that is of course while still having a ridiculous amount of penalty minutes every single season. All in all, the numbers Kachuk put up throughout his career are great, a total of 1,065 career points in 1,201 games played. And despite not being inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame yet, he was inducted into the USA Hockey Hall of Fame back in 2012. The one knock on Kachuk is the lack of hardware. He he never won any of the major individual NHL awards and never won a Stanley Cup, and that could be the biggest reason why he hasn't been inducted into the Hall of Fame yet. Moving on to number 5, we have Steve Larmer, one of the greatest Blackhawks of all time, and one third of the famous party line featuring himself, Al Secord, and Denny Savard. Steve Larmer was a member of the Blackhawks from 1980 all the way up until 1993 before he played the final two years of his NHL career with the New York Rangers. Larmer really never had a bad season in the NHL. He was good as soon as he came into the NHL up until the day he decided to hang them up, scoring 80 or more points in a single season seven times throughout his career, including a 90-point rookie season back in 82-83, winning him the Calder Trophy. He finished his NHL career over a point per game with 1,012 points in 1,006 games played, and as of right now, sits fifth on the Blackhawks' all-time points list with 923, only behind Patrick Kane, Denny Savard, Bobby Hull, and Stan Makita. At this point, it seems pretty unlikely that Steve Larmer will be inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. He's been eligible for a very long time. And much like Keith Kachuk, Steve Larmer's lack of hardware and accolades could be the biggest reason why he is yet to be inducted. At number 4, we have Rod Brendamore. Right now, we know him as one of the best coaches in the NHL for the Carolina Hurricanes, but he also had a very impressive playing career. After being drafted with the 9th overall pick in the 1988 draft by the Blues, he played all but two seasons with the team before being traded to the Philadelphia Flyers in 1991. This is when Brendamore's career would really take off, as he definitely had his best offensive seasons as a member of the Philadelphia Flyers, scoring 85 or more points three different times, including a 97-point season in 1993-94. After eight successful seasons in Philadelphia from 1991 up until 1999, the Flyers traded
traded Rod Brindamore to the Carolina Hurricanes amidst the 99-2000 season. Although Brindamore didn't put up the offensive numbers with Carolina that he did in Philadelphia, this is when he actually started to win some hardware. With back-to-back -back Selkie Trophy wins in 2006 and 2007, and playing a massive role in the Carolina Hurricanes winning the 2006 Stanley Cup. That, on top of almost 1,500 games played and almost 1,200 career points, you would think there is a place in the Hockey Hall of Fame for Rod Brendamore, and I'd like to think he's definitely going to get in there one day. Next up at number 3, we have French-Canadian Pierre Turgeon, who was selected with the first overall pick in the 1987 NHL draft by the Buffalo Sabres. He put up some pretty incredible numbers throughout his 19-year NHL career, where he played for six different teams, a nine-time 30 goal scorer, and broke the 100 point mark twice, including a staggering 132 point season for the New York Islanders in 92 93. Looking at his overall career numbers, it's a wonder why he hasn't been inducted yet. 1,327 points in 1,294 games played, a Lady Bing in 1993. He is one of 34 NHL players to break the 1,300 point mark, and every single other player that has done that is either active or in in the Hockey Hall of Fame. It kind of makes you wonder why is he the one being left out? It could be the same thing that I mentioned when it comes to Steve Larmer and Keith Kachuk, he just doesn't have a lot of hardware, with the only individual award he won being the Lady Bing and having never won a Stanley Cup. Even if he is never inducted, that doesn't take away from the fact that he had a fantastic NHL career and definitely lived up to the hype of being a number one overall pick back in 1987. Number two, Alexander McGillney. It's kind of baffling as to why McGillney is not a member of the Hockey Hall of Fame. On top of putting up incredible numbers throughout his NHL career and being very successful, he literally changed the game and risked his life to come over and play in the NHL. If you are not familiar with his story, I strongly recommend you head over to Sportsnet's YouTube channel and check out the 20 minute mini documentary they made on him titled The Defector. Basically, Alexander McGillney was the first player to defect from Russia and come over to play in the NHL in North America. And when he did, he became a superstar. In 1992-93, McGillney scored 76 goals and put up 127 points for the Buffalo Sabres. That season from McGillney is tied for 5th most goals scored in a single season of all time. He finished his career with 1,032 points in 990 games played, over a point per game. He won the Stanley Cup in 2000 and also won the Lady Bing in 2003, so he has some hardware to go along with the statistics. NHL fans have been calling for McGillney to be inducted for years now, and I am really hoping he gets that call one day. And at number one, Theo Fleury, the true definition of an underdog. Standing at just five foot six and being selected in the eighth round, 166th overall back in 1987 by the Calgary Flames, Theo Fleury went on to have an incredible NHL career against all the odds. In my opinion, a Hall of Fame worthy career. Fleury scored 60 or more points in a season 12 different times throughout his NHL career and actually broke the 100 point mark twice, once in the 90-91 season and once in the 92-93 season. In my opinion, it's a no-brainer that Theo Fleury should one day be inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. He finished his career over a point per game with 1,088 points in 1,084 games. He won the Stanley Cup in 1989 and actually is also over a point per game in the playoffs with 79 points in 77 career playoff games. If you want to learn more about Theo Fleury and his story, my buddies and Andrew and Audie have a podcast together, and they actually had Theo Fleury on for an interview in a recent episode. You should definitely go check it out. And on top of that, Fleury also has a book titled Playing With Fire. You should also go check that out if that's something you're interested in. But I mean, get this guy in the Hall of Fame already. But that is going to do it for this video on some of the greatest NHL players of all time to not be inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. And of course, if there are any players that I didn't talk about in this video that you think had a Hall of Fame worthy career, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below and as always thank you guys so much for the support we're getting so close to 40,000 subscribers so if you guys are new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button for some more nhl content and of course if you guys did enjoy the video please make sure to drop a like on it that is the best way to share your support and with all that being said i'll catch you guys on the next video